Hello, everyone. Here we go. We are live. Thank you. Hello, Hi, everybody. Hi, Laura. Good to see everyone. Come on in. Just get set cool. up. And... There we go. There we go. Hi, Nancy. Come on in. It's good to see everybody. Let's get my screens ready. Hi, Ina. Good to see you. Uh, I'm having a cold day in my little neighborhood today. Raining this morning and now, although I'm warming up a little bit, but uh, I got wet this morning walking. <sighs> All right. You can come here, it's 91 degrees. I've heard it's kind of warm in some of some places where you all are living. Yeah. We just, yeah, we haven't had the heat yet. Like my balcony garden is like I have strawberries that came out. They're they're green and there's nothing's changing because it's cold. <laughs> but where are, you? where are you? I'm on the west coast. So I'm the furthest west coast you can get in uh Victoria, BC. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's sort of like couple hours north of Seattle yeah sorry yeah Seattle. familiar with it lived in uh, Bellevue Washington for many 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 oh, okay so yeah you know exactly where I am then yeah oh darn it sorry sorry Max <laughs> the you know sorry I did something let's give me one second here it's so silly that uh uh that um sorry this is just a little technical thing I'm doing here um, the silly names change so quickly on here that I can't. All right, did that work now, Max? Is that good? <laughs> uh, we're just trying to. I was just trying to make Max my co-host, and I was because the, the as you guys enter the room, it it moves the. So I cursored and clicked on it. Clicked on the wrong wrong name. All right, I think we're good now. Did I do it again? Oh no, it worked. Okay, good. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see, we still have a few more people probably trying to get into the room, which is fine. Uh, you, you notice we have a waiting room or maybe it doesn't show differently to you, but we have a waiting room now so that we can make sure we've authenticated everybody that shows up to class and to make sure they're not, uh, that's all of you lovely people and not some disruptors that um, entered some of our classes on Saturday to cause a little bit of trouble. So if any of you and, are in, and Sunday and Sunday, yeah, they were and, busy. And yeah, they were very busy, and it it was it was traumatizing for a, a lot of us, especially when we we're teaching, to have the disruptions or the you know foul language or whatever. You know, these are those people that have nothing better to do than mm -hmm. to you know, I I don't know. I guess they just don't have anything else going on in their life. They got to just come in and do silly things like that. So. If don't get offended, if you know somebody's authenticating you or you don't get entered in right away, we just want to make sure that it's all of you lovely people here to actually learn and um, be part of this community, um, and and we want it to be a safe space. So no matter how safe we are, somebody always comes up with a way to sneak in or do something, um, do something. So. Uh, so, but we are taking care of it. So we haven't had any problems so far, fingers crossed this week. It was just on the weekend that we had a little bit of trouble. So Max is here. He is in the chat. Um, he will help us if we've got any issues with technical stuff. If you want to learn how to change your name or you, um, you know, anything that, that might come up. And he's here for the whole entire hour. So we've got that. Uh, I have my screen shared. So just to make sure we're all in the right spot, we're here to, we are here to learn about seven healing foods and there's and seven recipes that go with these foods. Excited to share my recipes with you. And I've had um, a few, a bit of feedback. Hi, Henrietta, I see you there. Hi, Hi. Um, <laughs> you were talking, so I didn't want to disturb you. Oh, no worries, no worries. Um, <laughs> Uh, what was I going to say about the recipes? Yeah, like I, I do like to share recipes. Now, in my last class where I was just, um, where was I? What class was that? Oh, the arthritis class. If anybody was there, I had a few feedback from people saying, we want more recipes, want more recipes. So 
I'm going to consider maybe doing a class with some more recipes other than the seven you're going to get today to help with sort of things like arthritis and, you know, st such like stuff like that. So stay tuned for something I might try to create. And uh, it's good to have Robin here. No problem, Robin. I know it's early, early morning for some of you. I've had somebody from New Zealand in my last class. Lynn was there. Robin's here today. Uh, we love it when you come to classes. Uh, I know it's early morning for you. So my name is Ravina. I'm from Victoria, BC, which we just talked about. Uh, I studied health and nutrition my whole entire life. I keep on learning and learning, and learning, and then I pass that learning on to you because there's nothing better than having curated, valuable information that has been vetted to you versus you just Googling stuff and, and getting all sorts of information some good some not so good remember when you are on the internet i always remind people that just because somebody says something on the on a web web page doesn't mean it's true sometimes it can be completely false remember that now a lot you got to read the fine print if you're an, you're on sort of a a website that you're not familiar with uh you don't know who who is created who has created that website you do need to look at the fine print and find out where your source is coming from because they might be just trying to sell you a bunch of pills or sell you something. Uh, not everybody is like that, but uh, the internet is free. Everybody can get out. Well, it's not free, free, but it's it's free in the sense that you can have access to so much information. So just be a little bit cognizant of that when you are online. But here it gets set up. You have guides from all over the country. We all have different expertise. Uh, there are other uh, health and wellness uh, guides uh, in Get Set Up, at Get Set Up. And they, um, they all have just like interest different. And it could be the job that they did, or it could be a hobby that they had. Like for me, I've always been involved with health and wellness. But like, for example, Ty, I don't know what his quote, corporate real job was, but maybe it was teaching Tai Chi. I'm not sure. But it's just really neat to see sometimes it's a person's love, their passion. Now they've retired and now they can just go gangbusters, you know, and like just get right into whatever it is, whether it's photography, like Scott teaches our photography. I just love anything to do with health. So, you know, that's why I'm going to just keep on coming up with classes like this. So we are live streaming and we are taping or recording the class you can ask for a copy of that at the end and we also just a reminder we don't get paid any kickbacks from any companies for talking about their product or service so is everyone ready to get started who's taken this class before anybody there's probably some that have taken the class before um i love it when people take a class a second time i think that depending on who you are taking the class with you can learn from each other that's a really big part of this so we're going to just talk a little bit about the understanding the healing power of food. We all need to eat. Uh, it's a, it's a it's a fact. We we need food to survive. So why not find out which ones are the more powerful foods, and then we can try and get those in our diet on a, a daily or weekly basis. We are going to talk about seven healing foods that I chose personally for the for my list because I wanted to share those ones with you. They are things that are very accessible to most people, unless you live in a very, very remote part of the world. Um, I think you're going to be able to find all of these products, um, these ingredients and food items in your grocery store. And then we're going to actually talk about the recipes. And then just so you're aware, at the end of the class, you will get a post email from me and you will get a beautiful PDF, which is a printable uh, booklet with the seven recipes in it. So you can just print it at home or you can just pull it up on your phone. And unfortunately for any of you that are live streaming, you won't have access to that, but just re register for this class. It, it gets put on the schedule pretty much every week. So I'm going to ask a question now. Feel free. I'd love to hear where everybody is from. Go ahead and put your, 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 um, where you're from in the chat. And then tell me this. Just let me know, have you ever used a food to heal a body ailment or symptom in your lifetime? Maybe it's something your mom taught you. Maybe it's something your grandmother taught you. Maybe it's um, something that uh, you you discovered from a, from a neighbor. Um, Myra, do you have a question? We 
We got New York and ginger to, for upset stomach. Yep. Orlando, Florida. Oh, you must be a lot warmer than me right now. How warm is it in New York City? Is it starting to get hotter there? I don't know what it would be like right now. Uh, let's see. Yes. Garlic and ginger. Great. Yeah. I, you know, I'm pretty sure that my mom used garlic when we had a cold. She'd probably make, she'd put that in soup. And, and also I do kind of remember, now I'm not sure, but just eating chicken soup when we weren't feeling good. So maybe there was something in the bones or something in the chicken uh, that, uh, that was, was a healing thing. Uh, cranberry juice. Okay. Jean, what do you, use, what do you use that for? Is that to help make sure you don't get kidney stones? That's a one, a, a common thing that they use cranberry juice for. Yeah. Chicken noodle soup for colds. Yeah. That's definitely some, oh, it's 80 degrees. Oh my gosh. Wow. Thyme tea for colds. Yeah, thyme. I'm growing thyme in the garden right now. Prune juice for digestive issues. I definitely remember my grandmother having prunes if she was having problems in the bathroom. Oh, bladder infection. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cranberries are good for that. So yeah. So look at us. Like we have all, even if we didn't think we had, we have used things like, Ina, as you says, she's used honey for healing. Honey and is a sweet, obviously, and it can spike your insulin, but honey is full of beautiful minerals. And when you read the, the local honeys and you see wh where the bees have, like where they get their, their, you know, where they, where they travel, it's really interesting and it can change the flavor of our honey, which is lovely. And ginger ale for upset stomach. Yes, I remember that one. Now, the only thing about ginger ale is there's a lot of sugar in ginger ale, the regular one. So yes, it, maybe it was as a kid, we're just like, oh, I got an upset stomach because we wanted pop. I'm not sure about that one, but there is definitely a uh, non-sugary uh, ginger ale. Bone broth. Wow, Nikki. Yeah, you had some really amazing things. And Max is, is uh, participating. Good for you, Max. Turmeric powder. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's uh, keep moving along. So um, let's talk about the healing foods. Oh yeah, and Laura's mentioning black strap. I have some molasses in my cupboard, but I don't use it very often for iron, yeah. All right, natural nutrient-dense foods. Why are they known, why are they um, healing? They're known to help protect against, mitigate, and even cure some chronic diseases. So they also slow down the effects of aging. Yes, we want that. And they are um, also there to help promote longevity. So when we think of nutrient-dense foods, what kind of foods do you think of? You can write it in the chat or you can shout it out. Nuts. Nuts, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Nutrient-dense foods. It's kind of in the name, isn't it? Nutrient dense foods, like what, what does that mean? If a food is nutrient dense, it means dense, meaning like, uh, like full, like dense, dense. It, it means that that food is packed full of nutrients. And what are our nutrients? Our micronutrients are our vitamins and our minerals. So if something is considered a nutrient dense food, that means it's packed full of vitamins and minerals. Isn't that what we want? We want our body stores to be full. Uh, for example, if you eat a banana, you're getting all the great potassium, you're getting all the minerals and vitamins that come in amazing banana in that synergistically balanced way when you eat real food versus say a supplement. So you get all this great vitamins and minerals. Now remember this, this is something we all forget. When we put anything in our mouth, doesn't matter what it is, a candy, a cookie, a sweet potato, a whatever it is, our body has to process that food. It starts in our mouth, we, we chew, and the saliva, we have enzymes that come out, starts to digestion, starts in the mouth, which they always say. That's why when people like swallow food like quickly, they're not, they're not giving themselves any, any um, favors here because they're not starting their digestion early enough. But our body has processes it has to do to process whatever goes in and then come out. So between here and there, 
our body needs, what does it need? It needs minerals. It needs vitamins to do the processing, to get through all its stuff, to get the absorption of the nutrients out. Like all those processes takes vitamins and minerals. So if you eat a vitamin and nutrient dense food, woo, there's a plethora of vitamins and minerals in a banana to process the banana. And oh, there's some leftover vitamin A so that it will store it in your body. It puts it into the stores. So if you eat nutrient dense foods, you're storing um, ample excess of these vitamins and minerals. But if you're eating a bag of potato chips every day, guess what? It takes vitamins and minerals to process it, even though there's no vitamin or mineral to be seen in the bag of chips, for example. So you then start stealing from the stores in your body to process whatever you just ate. So these empty calorie things, oh, popcorn's no big deal. There's not, well, we still have to process it. So now you're stealing from your stores in your body that are getting lower and lower and lower if you don't add in nutrient dense food. So that's the biggest thing that I wanted to explain to you all because that's the most important. But why are nutrient dense foods so amazing? Because the number one thing that they do is reduce the inflammation hiding in our bodies. Who here has inflammation in their bodies? Like, like we all do. To what extent do we have inflammation in our bodies? Depends. Depends on what you do with your body, your temple, right? This is the only body that I have been given on earth. And so there's no do-overs. Like if I don't take care of this vessel, uh, nobody's going to do it for me. I mean, I could go to a spa for a week where they, you know, get me on a regiment. Uh, I could get advice from many people, but it's what I do with my body. Am I giving it enough rest? Am I giving it enough water? Am I giving it some really good nutrient dense foods? The reason why nutrient dense foods, again, is so important is because it reduces inflammation in our bodies. They are the anti-inflammatory foods. What, is, what would you consider an uh, inflammatory food? Does anybody know what an inflammatory food example would be? It causes the inflammation. You can write it in the chat or you can shout it out. Sugar? Yes. Sugar. That's the biggie. Yeah. Is salt? Yeah. Uh, uh, lots of salt, alcohol, sugar. Sugar is your, your biggest enemy. Like, Unfortunately, mm. hopefully nobody has a family that owns a sugar sugarcane factory or sugarcane <laughs> field. Cause I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be like Oprah. Uh, I won't be like Oprah, but you know, when she mentioned beef once in one of her shows, remember years ago, oh my gosh, it turned into this big explosion of, so I'm not saying don't eat sugar. I'm just saying be conscientious of the amount of sugar because sugar, first of all, is addictive. It's an addictive, addicted. You, you can get addicted to sugar. And secondly, it causes inflammation inside our bodies. Guess what loves sugar? Cancer. Cancer loves sugar. What about some of these, you know, nasty uh, bacteria and stuff that we don't want in our bodies? They love sugar. You cut off their, their, their sugar and they eventually disappear. Does lemon sugar. cause um, inflammation? A lot of lemon? Um, or no, no, I heard that. No, no, I I have not heard that. Yeah, no, I have not heard that. A uh, lemon is okay. actually a fruit. Um, it's quite a tart uh, fruit, and I've only heard benefits of lemon. I have not heard of it being inflammatory. But keeping in mind, some people can be intolerant to certain foods, so uh, it you know it could be tomato. So Jody's mentioned tomato. So what we're not going to get into too much detail in this class, but I can say there are some foods that just don't agree with certain people. So for example, Jody's asking about tomato. Maybe when she eats tomato, she doesn't always feel that great. Or maybe she feels fantastic after tomato. Tomato is one of those nightshades. And for some people with arthritis, tomatoes can react their um, inflammation and their joints. So, but for some people, tomatoes are totally fine. For me, tomatoes are just totally fine. But I can't really tolerate red peppers that much. When I eat red peppers, I don't feel great. I don't get good digestion when I have red peppers um, or green peppers. So it just depends. Yes, there are natural sugars in fruit, Melissa. Absolutely. That's the fructose. But think about when you eat the full fruit, unless you're juicing the fruit and just getting the sugar and no fiber. When you eat, a, like a, for example, an apple, 
not juice, but the whole apple, you're getting all that amazing fiber. So um, same with like an orange. If you eat an orange versus orange juice, you're getting all the fiber. So it helps to slow down the sugar from like hitting your bloodstream so quickly. So that's the power of nutrient dense foods. There are many doctors now out there that have studied Western medicine. They've gotten their, their MD from Western medicine, but they've shifted now because they've realized that nutrition is so powerful. So they make nutrition the center of their, of their practice, like Dr. Mark Hyman. And you might've heard of him on TV. Um, he has a podcast. He's very, very verbal out there trying to get everybody really uh, involved and then there's Dr. Axe. Dr. Axe feels, he, Dr. Axe has said that what you put in your grocery cart has the biggest impact on your health. So, you know, if you're going to sneak the chips in, sneak some of these extra foods in, because maybe you think your spouse will be upset if you don't pick up that, you know, type of muffin or whatever, just think twice about it because what you grab at the grocery store really has an impact. And that means when you're on vacation as well. Maybe once a week, once a year, you go on your trip to Maui or wherever it is you go, and you not you like to um, indulge a little bit on having desserts after dinner every dinner. That's different. You're it's a specified amount of time, but when we make it a habit in our in our own homes where we live, then that is not a good thing. My grocery store has a little thing that after eight p.m. all the uh, baked goods like the muffins, the croissants, like most of those things that they can't really sell very well the next day goes on half price. Right? Were we, when we first met, when my husband and I first met, that was our thing. We'd go eight o'clock, we'd go for a little walk because the grocery store was in walking distance. We'd pick up a croissant, we'd have a little chocolate croissant for our dessert, and then we would get a couple for, you know, breakfast the next morning. But we were making that a habit. So we had to cut ourselves off of that. So um, health and nutrition is so important to us. So numerous healing foods out there. We only have time for seven today, but I do have a class called Natural Remedies and I am teaching it later on today. I think in about two or three hours. That one specifically goes through six common ailments and tells you what natural remedies to use for that ailment. For example, high blood pressure is one of my seven that I talk about. So just keep that in mind for later on today. So let's get started with my seven for today. I kind of snuck in, I mentioned a bit about apples. Apples, we they're underrated. They're in our grocery stores everywhere. And most of you, I can guess, probably have more than one or two or three or four different types of apples at any one time in your grocery store. Apples are amazing. The saying an apple a day keeps the doctor away has been around forever and is true in lots of ways. And why is the apple so great? First of all, it's this gorgeous, beautiful piece of fruit that's crunchy. Uh, it can be sweet depending on the, the brand of apple, um, it, uh, it's packed full of pectin, beautiful fiber. If you have heart disease, apples will, will help. I mean, it gives you a double dose of protection from heart disease. So if you are on the verge of stuff, you're worried about a heart attack, you're worried about how clean your your vessels are in your body, start eating an apple every single day. Green apples are fantastic. Some people find them too tart. Uh, Gail's asking the question. Some people find them too tart. But uh, if you grew up eating green apples like me, I love the tart. Yeah, I love them. I do too. Um, the only difference between the different uh, types of apples is the sugar content. So a honey crisp apple, which is like to die for, it's like dessert for me, has more sugar than your Granny Smith apple. Depending on where you live, I would suggest seeking out the local apples. Like why not get a beautiful local apple in, you know, where you live in New Zealand or where you live in Australia versus getting the apples flown in from Canada. Uh, we get apples a lot of times from Washington. Who was it from Washington again? Oh, was it Laura? I think it was Laura said she lived in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bellevue. 
Yeah, we get a lot of apples. Like we grow a lot of apples where I live, but we also get a lot of Washington apples that come up. So Washington is a great state for, for growing apples. What I want to say about apples is, uh, did you know there's a season for apples? Because we see them in the grocery store all the time. We think it, they grow all the time. They don't. Do you, we know when they grow or when, when you can pick them? Summer. Anybody? I think uh, summer. No. Nope. Summer? Nope. Fall? In the fall. Apple yeah. is actually fall. I know. I thought, well, wouldn't they be ripe in July? Nope. It depends on where you live, of course. In where I live, the apples are ready in September. So why am I eating an apple in July? Like, why are there lots of apples in July? Growing season, different places. Yeah, most of the season is fall. However, the thing about apples, even though it's a perishable item, right? Like perishable, meaning it can go bad if it's you know not refrigerated or, or that. Apples are have a really uh, good shelf life in the sense that they can take them, put them in crates. They can put them in a cool, dry spot. They put some sort of gas or something on and it, it keeps the apples so that they can have them in the grocery store all year round. But how can you tell when an apple is old? Does anybody know? It gets sort of wrinkled and soft. Yes. Um, it might hide the fact that it's old because the it hasn't started wrinkling. But if you bite into it, it's quite mealy and soft. And it, you know that's not my idea of apples. There's that one. There's a one type of apple um, that I never buy because it always seems to be mealy to me all all year round. But keep that in mind that your apples are kind of ready on the tree, sort of like end of August into September. So if you're eating an apple in March, it's probably from the season, the season before. It can still be good if it was stored properly. You know, apples are one of those things you can leave in your fridge. You're going on your two week vacation. You don't have to throw them out or give it to the neighbor. Like you might have to give the milk away or um, something else that's even more perishable. Jolene's saying, mentioning here, she says she gets a bit of itchiness in her throat from apples. However, she can eat applesauce. So I would say that there's a possibility that you have a bit of a reaction to the skin on the apples. Or, or more, more common is that you might be uh, sensitive to the pesticides on apples. Apples is one of the, the dirty dozen. They talk about the dirty dozen. What's the dirty dozen? Those are the things that are the heaviest, most heavily, that's not a word, most um, heavy in terms of pesticides, apples. So I never buy an apple unless it's organic because of the pesticides, because I am sensitive as well to the pesticides. I'm not, I'm not a doctor, uh, Jolene, so I would say that you're, if you can eat applesauce and tolerate it, it's probably what's on the skin of the apples. Now, I'm not sure if you've tried organic apples. You still need to clean your stuff, but um, that might be uh, part of it is because when you do an uh, apple pie as well, usually people peel it, right? So it's something either in the peel or on the peel. All right. Well, we'll get to the, we'll get to the, um, to the recipe uh, at the end. Yes, global marketplace, but the northern, yes, that's right. So you're right. Sometimes we get apples um, coming from another country that might be uh, in season there, but we get it delivered. But when you think about it, apple season is like a month, but we're getting it all 12 months, right? So uh, I have an apple tree, two apple trees on my balcony. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping I'm going to get apples this year. They're not very big trees, but you know, there's blossoms on them. So number two food, ginger. And a few of you mentioned ginger as something that you've uh, used. Anybody uh, also enjoy? Yes, Giovanna. Yes, the dirty dozen. Strawberries is number one dirty dozen. Do you know why? You probably know because you put it on here. Think of a strawberry. Look, pretend that you're looking at a strawberry. What does it look like? It's one of those kind of weird things, right? The seeds are on the outside. That's why. So you've got this beautiful, beautiful strawberry. The seeds aren't on the inside, they're on the outside. And those seeds have like little nooks and crannies and where the pesticide can sit. That's why strawberries, you either buy them local and you know what they do at that farm, or you have to really, really clean. Like I can't eat 
regular strawberries in the store anymore because I'm so sensitive to the pesticides. But yeah, and the skin is porous, but that's why, because of the seeds are sitting there and, and it just clings underneath the seeds on the strawberry. So just getting back to ginger. Why is ginger so powerful? This is my number two out of my seven things that I think is the highest in healing, ginger. You'll, we'll get to number one at the end, but the number two one I think is ginger and it's got something in it called gingerols. And this compound helps to stop nausea in our bodies. And it also helps to uh, promote good digestion. So if you have a problem with digestion or you're feeling like full, 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 and you're feeling a little sick, Maybe you're feeling sick because you had because you just did a car ride or you, you had to take a bus or maybe you're going to be on a cruise ship. You know, fingers crossed that starts happening soon. So the ginger, the compound in ginger actually goes into your digestive tract and then it goes into this place where the receptors are and it plugs into the receptors. So it takes up the place where the nausea things would come in and, and, and cling there and cause nausea in you. So it stops nausea. So ginger has been around for thousands of years. Um, Chinese, uh, Asian cultures have been using ginger for like a long, long time. Now, current studies have proven that ginger is that powerful. So uh, please consider adding ginger to your life. If you don't love ginger or you're not sure how to use it, start by buying, well, ginger powders. People ask me about this. The powder of ginger is absolutely fine. Is it as potent as fresh? No, it is not. Um, I would suggest buying a little bit of ginger. It comes as a root. It looks, oh, sorry, that's not it. Um, it's like a root, like here. And if you cut it, it gets that nice sort of yellow color inside. So if you are not using ginger a lot or not that quickly, you can put it in a little Ziploc freezer bag and put it in your freezer up to about three months or so, and then just pull it out and cut off a little uh, little arm of it to use in your stir fry or in your soup or throw it in your smoothie even, um, because ginger is powerful and it's a very good healing food. The next one is garlic. Garlic is lovely. I love the smell of garlic. I love the taste of garlic. If you're not a fan of garlic, try starting with garlic powder, uh, but I would suggest seeing if you can enjoy it. The recipe I have also teaches you how to roast garlic. So if you think it's just too powerful when it's raw, try roasting it. If this is the thing that you take for inf uh, bringing down inflammation, bringing, getting rid of microbes, microbes, bacteria, viruses. That's why they're good for colds. That's why it's good for infections. It's, garlic is an amazing food and it's, it's linked to helping your heart health, uh, cancer prevention and ca cancer treatment even, it's been used. It also helps to control bringing your blood pressure down if you've got blood pressure issues. So garlic is one of those. And of course the treating of colds and infections. The next food is blueberries. So here we go, we got our second fruit, blueberries. Now, if you've taken my optimal brain health class, I've talked about blueberries and how powerful they are for our brains. We, I call them brain berries. My mentor, Jim Quick, calls them brain berries. So now I call them brain berries. That beautiful, deep color, blue color. They, blueberries, you eat them and they, they it's like a Pac-Man. It eats up all the free radicals that have been caused in your body. Free radicals are not good from oxidation of food or, or oils or things that you've put into your body. Francis, you have a question? Oh, you got it uh, off of mute. You have to take yourself off of mute. Oh, still on mute. Um, yeah, I think I there got you it. Go. You got so it. When you talk about blueberries and if you just do that for everything, does it matter if they're fresh or frozen? Um, okay blueberries fresh is just as great because most things when they freeze them they have flash frozen them at their peak you want to eat food at their peak right do i want the green banana that was picked before it was even at its peak no we don't freeze bananas right because that's hard to do with the freezing of bananas but blueberries they pick them at their peak which is when they're at their peak their best bestness you know and then they freeze them, they flash freeze them and put them into, into bags. I buy 
frozen blueberries all the time. I also buy fresh blueberries when they're in season here where I live, which is usually, I think in July, I think is when we get our blueberries. So absolutely, totally fine, Francis. I would uh, totally buy, I always have frozen blueberries in my house. And then I pull them out and they, they're even like candy to me when they're frozen, like not 100% frozen, but slightly frozen. And I eat them like, um, you know, like something sweet, like a sweet treat. They also have been um, uh, researched to help with cancer. Um, you know, again, these are things from research, like I've curated the information to give you. Some of the studies are stronger than other studies, but it also has been told that blueberries help to reduce your blood pressure. So if you have any kind of blood pressure issues, enjoy your blueberries. You know, I think every household should have blueberries and apples in it at all times. When I uh, buy apples, if I say get apples on sale, I sometimes even, I wash them, I core them, I cut them. I like the skin and then I freeze them in bags and I keep my, my uh, sliced apples frozen in the fridge for apple pie once in a while. Uh, I put them in my smoothie because I have one of the um, really good uh, mixers, um, blenders. Um, I make applesauce from them. So I use, I save my apples that way. Um, any kind Did you of say you, you peel them before you um, freeze them? Is that what you said? I have peeled them when I'm going to use it for pie, but I often don't peel them oh, uh, or, okay. or, or for, or for, sorry, for, um, for applesauce. But I like the peel of the apples because I only buy organic. And so I usually keep the peel on because I use it in different things. Somebody's asking about blueberries. Should they be wild? Not necessarily. The, the, the jury's, well, here's the thing wild blueberries apparently are even more healthy for you but the actual the actual blueberry itself is so powerful so it doesn't really matter whether it's a wild blueberry or a regular blueberry they're all pretty fantastic but they do say that blueberries uh wild ones are better for you um blackberries are also amazing um so somebody mentioned blackberries yes blackberries blackberries also has uh Maybe not quite the same as blueberries, but aren't they amazing, blackberries? Does anybody have blackberry bushes by their house in the summer and they just grow wild? That's one of the amazing free things we can do is go hunt around for blackberry bushes in the summertime. I love blackberries. They're like my all-time favorite. I love the flake when they're fully ripened and the crows and the birds haven't got to the just perfectly ripened blackberry just when the tartness is gone. Aren't those to die for? I, I just love them. But any berries, like berries are really actually good for us. So just keep eating berries. Now, our fifth one is salmon. I know some of you don't love fish, but salmon is packed full of omega-3 fatty acids. And you've heard me probably go on and on and on and on and on about omega-3s. Please make sure you get it because your body cannot manufacture it. They can't create it in its in the body. You have to take it in. So Omega-3s are needed for a lot of body processes to get things done, to do the detoxification, to build our muscles and our bones and everything. You need omega-3s. So if you're not going to get it from fish, try and get it from your seeds or some other source. Anti-inflammatory. Omega-3s is your anti-inflammatory um, um, anti uh, property. Someone's asking about mercury. Mercury is pretty, can be pretty bad in tuna. So if you're pregnant or if you have any kind of um, immune deficiency, I would be careful with the amount of tuna you eat. I have not heard that about salmon, but here's a little trick for you. If you are concerned about toxin like mercury in our fish, the baby fish are the better fish to eat. So what's another fatty fish that you could eat that's tinier than salmon. Anybody have an idea? It's the smell. The little yeah, or little sardines. The little sardines. We and, and how inexpensive are sardines in our in our in our grocery store? Pretty inexpensive. Sardines, yes. If you can tolerate or like the taste of sardines, I always cut it um tiny minced onion in with my sardine and it's absolutely delicious. Sockeye salmon is like the king of kings, right, of salmon. Um, because of the red richness, it apparently has more of the nutrients in it. 
Uh, coho salmon is just fantastic. I would say get whatever wild salmon you can get. I would prefer the sockeye salmon because it's a little bit more rich in some of these nutrients. Your pink salmon is just good. It's just as good, but I will say this, and I apologize for anybody who has a fish farm. If you own a fish farm or have a family member that owns a fish farm, I do not support, no, I do not recommend eating farmed fish if you can at all not eat it. I would rather not eat any fish than farmed fish, but then I would be taking omega-3 supplements. Canned salmon is perfectly okay. Again, at its peak, it's, it's canned in the can. Um, most of it, most salmon that's canned is wild salmon. You don't usually get farmed fish in cans, just an FYI. A lot of farmed salmon is sold in the store. So if salmon is really cheap that you're buying, make sure you check the source, check your source because salmon is fairly pricey. It's not a, it's not a cheap one. Uh, but it's, you know, it's packed full of protein and the vitamin Bs and the selenium. And, you know, to me, if you learn to cook salmon properly and you'll get, you'll get that uh, hints in the, in the recipe book, um, salmon is delicious if you cook it properly. All right. Number six is avocados. Avocados, actually a fruit. Were we aware of that? It's a fruit. It is uh, very high in the healthy fats that our body loves. Our brains love it. Our, um, uh, our whole entire body loves this monounsaturated fat. It is so packed full of fiber. Did you know that, that avocados are packed full of fiber? So if you're going to smash a half a avocado on your toast in the morning, you're going to feel fantastic because you're just going to make you feel full. You're going to get all the great nutrients. You're going to protect yourself from cancer. You're going to lower your cholesterol, your bad cholesterol. Um, it's going to be amazing to have, um, have eating your avocado full of vitamin C as well. Like if you're not into citrus, like I always say this to people, if you're not into like the this tartness, like the lemons and the oranges, you can get your vitamin C from avocados. Mm. And then the last one, the last food before we go look at the recipes. Uh, yes, a fruit, it has a seed. Yes, you're right, you're smart, that's right. It has a seed in it, so it's a fruit. So turmeric, this is my number one healing food. If you don't learn anything today, take this uh, turmeric and put this in your mind turmeric powerful it is the number one thing to reduce inflammation and most of us have inflammation in our bodies and most of us could do with less inf inflammation in our bodies that's a nice way of saying we all have inflammation in our bodies that is tipping our situation to having more pain with our arthritis having more um, swelling in our brain having more uh, difficulty with our mobility because our needs hurt because of the pain from the inflammation we don't always see the inflammation. We might feel it, but we might not know what it is. What's that morning stiffness when we wake up in the morning? Is that caused from inflammation? What about our toes? Are our toes sore because of inflammation? What about puffiness in our face? Is it inflammation? There is a blood test you can get done. You can ask your doctor to get this uh, test done to test what your inflammation level is. It's called the uh, reactive C, uh, sorry, C, the letter C with a dash, C dash reactive protein. That's the name of the blood test. Just get it tacked on to your blood work and see how much inflammation you actually have in your body. Um, Sandra's asking about needing black pepper. Turmeric on its own, fabulous. Turmeric with a bit of black pepper better absorption. So even more fabulous, I suppose you could say. If you don't have access to black pepper and you, or you don't like black pepper, no problem. Just have the turmeric somehow. Sprinkle it in your uh, oatmeal. Somebody does that. Put it in your smoothie. I'm going to come up with a, uh, a little recipe thing on the, you know, the 10 ways to use turmeric. I started putting it in my deviled eggs in my mixture with my egg yolk. Didn't even notice it was there, but I know I'm getting the benefit of the turmeric. Mm -hmm. It will help you absorb your turmeric if you've got black pepper mixed with it. So my last recipe for the one on turmeric is one of my mom's old recipes. And I added in 
you, I said half a teaspoon. You could put a little bit less if you want, but I added pepper in because of finding out that it helps with the absorption of the turmeric. So uh, let's stop sharing for one second. Um, does anybody have a question? I'm going to just move on to the recipe book now. Yeah, turmeric pills with black pepper is totally great. Um, I suggest Jolene, Jolene to use turmeric as a powder form because the turmeric that comes in the root, and I've seen the root, uh, is very hard to work with. Like it's, it stains your hands really easily. And these days, the way they do the turmeric in powder form is amazing. And because it's so powerful, it's fantastic as a powder and way easier to use because you can just sprinkle it into into soups or um, yeah, I'm coming up with all sorts of ways to use turmeric because I want to share that with this community because uh, I think I talk about turmeric in probably every class that I teach because I'm all about the holistic stuff. I'm all about the functional nutrition. All right. So this is what you're going to get um, at the end of the class. You're going to get this little booklet and it's going to have seven recipes in it. And we'll go through the foods that we just talked about. So uh, the first recipe is a chunky applesauce. So I teach you how to do an applesauce very easily in your slow cooker, your crock pot. The reason that I do that is because it allows the apples to heat up and slowly uh, cook and release their natural sugars from the apple. Now. If you're going to make applesauce on the stove, you may not get the benefit of this beautiful slow covet just cooking and doing its thing all all um, all morning. Isn't that nice to have that smell in your house? I say add ground cinnamon. You can add a little pinch of nutmeg. Don't overdo your nutmeg because it it's overpowering or allspice. But you notice in this recipe what's missing? Sugar. We just talked about how sugar causes inflammation. I don't need to add sugar. Do me a favor. If you decide to try this recipe, try it without sugar. And not a little bit of sugar, not, you know, like I don't want you to even taste it. It's like, it's like salting your food before you've tasted it. I want you to try slow cooking method of applesauce. And when you do that, the natural sugars come out. And when you taste your applesauce, you will be surprised at how beautiful it is and how there's enough sugar in it already. Yes, Francis, I do use monk fruit um, powder. That's the only sugar I use currently right now. And I'll put a pinch of it into things. But try the applesauce without it and, and see if you can, if you like it. Because I think that um, it, it's, it's quite lovely without any sugar in it. And then if you have to add some kind of sweetener, go for it at the end. But just see what you think with this recipe. Um, I've got little notes here. Try combining different apples so it's not all one note, the same apple. Yes, and you're right. Uh, lots of applesauce in the grocery store is, it says fructose to um, to confuse us because fructose is the natural sugar in fruit, but it's that high fructose corn syrup. Very bad for you. So that's the first recipe. The second one on ginger is ginger tea. So I teach you how to use that ginger root and how to make your own beautiful ginger tea if you're say your stomach is upset or or you're feeling a little bit nauseous for some reason. This is the best way. I always add a tiny bit of lemon and I always add a pinch of a, like a little bit of honey. So you can you can test it for how what your body uh, wants. Then the third recipe is a fun one for garlic. And this is a garlic mashed potatoes recipe, which is lovely with a steak. Uh, you know, steak houses always have the garlic mashed potatoes. Well, why don't we make it at home ourselves? I wonder that sometimes. Why aren't we doing it at home? This is a beautiful recipe. I use a third of cream in it. But if you don't, uh, if you aren't eating dairy, you can, or if you're eating dairy, you can also substitute the thick Greek plain yogurt. And if you're not eating dairy, you can add in a non-dairy uh, uh, cream of some sort. So there's there's even oat cream out there now that you can put in your coffee if you're if you're not eating dairy. 
this recipe, you're going to get all this stuff. So unless you're going to make the recipe in the next five minutes before I've had a chance to email it to you, you will get this whole booklet. So you don't have to take any notes or if you're excited to take the notes, take them. But I'm kind of going through it quickly. But here you see, I'm going to talk about roasting your garlic lovely 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 way to roast garlic you can take that garlic and just take a, a nice piece of toast and smash it onto onto the toast and make your own garlic bread isn't that delicious um well okay so somebody's asking about the benefits of white potatoes versus sweet potatoes okay i'll just give you a teeny tiny lesson because we're running not running out of time but white potatoes I wouldn't say that there's any huge benefit to white potatoes, honestly. Like if you look back in history, um, people that do paleo diet, which is something that I kind of follow, I don't really eat a lot of white potatoes anymore. Uh, white potato is a very different family than sweet potato, by the way. Sweet potato is a tuber and has been around for thousands of years. And like we've been eating sweet potato, even though it's sweeter, there's more nutrients in it. The white potato is kind of bland. Like honestly, most people add a whole lot of sour cream, chives, you know, you name it to their to, to their potatoes to make them taste good. Now that's not, I'm, you know, if you're Irish or, you know, you grew up eating potatoes, that's great. There's a lot, it's very high in the glycemic index, uh, regular potatoes. But by use, doing this potatoes and adding some fat to it and adding in the garlic, you're making it, first of all, very delicious. And secondly, why not? We can eat white potatoes once in a while. But it is very different than sweet potatoes, for sure. Then the next recipe is my blueberry vinaigrette recipe. I love this little recipe. You can have your frozen blueberries. You take out a cup and you, you have to have a fast blender. Do not eliminate the olive oil in this because you need the oil to emulsify your mixture. Otherwise it will not mix smoothly. Very important to have the oil in there. It'll make something that will resemble this picture. And then you can put it in a little bottle and seal it up and put it in your fridge. Um, I would say it will last about a good week in your fridge, but I wouldn't go any longer than that because it's, you know, it's a, it's a blueberry, right? A fresh blueberry or one that was frozen. This can be used on fish, on chicken and in your salads. So you've got three great spots to, to use. Maybe try it somewhere else and then let me know how you used it. But it's very, very delicious. If you're having like a friend over for lunch, for example, when we can start doing that, if you, you make this and they'll, they'll be like astounded at how beautifully sweet and gorgeous this salad dressing is. And they go, you don't use a jar? And you're like, uh, no, a, a bottle? No, I made this fresh. They'll, they'll, they'll love it. I did it with a salad and I used little shrimp. Oh, it went so well with that. So I think it goes well with fish. So you're going to get that recipe. And then this one, this recipe is the recipe of recipes. If you're going to make salmon and you're going to make salmon for someone who's not a big salmon lover. Um, it has a little bit of orange juice in it, a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of minced garlic. So you get the double dose here. You get the garlic and the, and the salmon. Uh, this is a gorgeous recipe to marinate your salmon. And I explain in detail how not to how to overcook your salmon because that's a no-no that's just doesn't taste good so if i could recommend that you add salmon or a fish to your diet once a week i i do believe that that would improve your health the second to last recipe is guacamole and guacamole is, you know, it's a Mexican recipe. This is actually from Guadalajara, Mexico. I went on a vacation years ago and watched the cook make the guacamole and I was like, I loved it. So I wanted to see exactly what they did. So I watched it. I had it written out in Spanish for me. I had my friend translate it for me. I knew some of the words, but this is how they make their guacamole absolutely delicious divine fresh fresh as best right you can buy um guacamole bought in the store like there's a holy guacamole that's uh they sell at costco in these little containers in a pinch i'll pull that out but i rather make my own 
And the more beautifully ripe, like the perfect ripeness of the avocado makes or breaks your guacamole. And it's a taste thing, right? You make it, you mash it, you add it, you taste it, give it a second. You need a little bit more salt, crush some more salt into it. And then lastly is my uh, mother. My mom's name is Sarita. Um, she passed away a few years, a number of years ago now. I miss her every day. I really miss my mom. And it's we just had Mother's Day. So that was not a tough time. M uh, May, the month of May is a very spiritual um, connected mon month for me because my husband has his birthday in, in, um, in, in May. So this is the very first Indian recipe my mom taught me to make when I was a young girl. It looks just like the picture. It, well, unless if you don't put the greenery on it, it might not look like that. It is a beautiful, think of it as a pea soup with some a punch of flavor. Now, typical pea soup, I remember growing up that people would throw ham and stuff in it, but this is totally a vegetarian, beautiful recipe. If you don't eat butter, so if you're vegan, you can um, change the butter and use coconut oil. But it's a totally vegetarian thing that you can dip your bread into. We use roti. You can use chapati. You can use uh, naan bread. You've heard of that. You can eat it with rice. It it freezes amazingly. So you can freeze it in little containers. And and when you want to pull out and you're feeling like something with a bit of rice or on toast or whatever, you can you, or eat it as a soup. This recipe takes. Look at the recipe. Two teaspoons of turmeric. So you're getting a good amount of turmeric in this recipe. I added, as you can see, that little half teaspoon of black pepper. I might drop that down to a quarter teaspoon. It might be a bit too spicy with the half teaspoon. But this recipe, I'm happy to share it with you. My mother, I know she's looking down from heaven and saying, I'm so excited that you're sharing this recipe with uh, your community. So please uh, let me know if you try any of the recipes and what your, what your um, results were and what you liked or didn't like. And I can definitely fine tune any of these recipes so that, um, uh, you know, just so that there, I improve them. So I added, I added the black pepper to that one because of um, the recommendation that the black pepper helps with absorption of the turmeric. So I do believe a lot of the supplements for turmeric now come with the black pepper. So there must be some real truth to the fact that it helps absorb the nutrients. So, um, sorry, my screen's not in a, I'll just put that back like that. So that's the uh, conclusion of the class. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I have to always fix this thing. I always say next class, but this is what this is. So we've got classes later today is natural remedies. Um, I'm teaching the brain health class. I think that's tomorrow. There's lots of new classes from all the guides. Uh, do some variety, like do a, do a music class, take an exercise class. It, life doesn't have to all be about food and wellness. Although I think life is about food because that's one of my loves, but why not learn something new? Like Donna's teaching some amazing like art history classes, things that I didn't take art history in school. So why not take it now if you haven't, you've got a, a little bit of an interest in it. I will send out the post email. You will get the recipes. Please fill out this feedback form that you get. It only takes a couple minutes. And yes, thanks, Jody. I, I do think that, and I every time I teach this class, my mom is like right here with us. Like she... I have to remember, I, I think I will try and get a picture of my mom so I can show the picture of her when I, cause she's got the most beautiful smile. Yeah. See you, Nikki, gorgeous smile. And she was always smiling. So, um, I would love to share that with you. So yeah, if you can do the feedback, that'd be great. You can invite friends now to class, which is awesome. Um, and you can actually host your own class. Are you a little bit shy to do that? Look at us. Like I was a learner just like you, and now I'm teaching here you can become um, a host of an interest group. So that might be kind of something fascinating to think about. So if you are interested in doing something like that, what you could do is, sorry for that interruption, you could um, just put it on the feedback form or, or send a message to help it get set up and you could teach a class. 
Does anybody have a question before we sign off for the day? Well, not for the day. I'm back in, in a couple hours with the next class, but I know we've got a pretty full class here, but does anybody have a question for me? Yeah, you've learned a lot today. That's great. You see the theme, right? If you take all my classes, I talk about food a lot because that's the nutrition part of me. And there's some overlaps with things, right? So why not cure our arthritis? You know, get us some arthritis relief, get our brain firing, um, have good, beautiful skin. Take your turmeric. Francis, oh, do you have a question? I'm sorry. Well, my question is, what about lectin? Foods with lectin? Or, you know, and tomatoes and cucumbers or the, um, you know, pills. I, I'm just confused about lectin. I know, I, you know, I will, I will say all of us are confused at, to a certain extent because of all the, the, it's all that information thrown at us online. We, we read this, is this good? This is bad. Here's the thing. Guess what? Our D DNA is so unique to us that even you and say your sister, I don't have a sister, but pretend I had a sister, me and a sister or a brother is completely different. Even though our environment was the same, our DNA is so close, but you know, my brother might not be um, able to tolerate tomatoes, although, but then I can tolerate tomatoes all the time. So try not to get too um, stuck on specific types of foods. Like don't eat purine foods. Well, if you have gout, you should stay away from purine foods because it can affect it. But try not to um, like pin, like try not to just um, decide, okay, that's it. I'm never eating that again. Because for example, a lot of our beans and our lentils, we don't tolerate, but if you soak them overnight, you get rid of that stuff. Remember, plants don't want to be eaten. Our plants were, were meant to survive and grow here and there. They don't want to be eaten. So they give off, they release <laughs> gases, they release um, like protective co co uh, covers on them. So if you soak them, that's a great way. And then get rid of that water and soak them. You get rid of some of the stuff, the phyto stuff that is there to protect themselves, just like we would protect our, ourselves, our plants protect ourselves. The only things out there that really want to be eaten are fruit. That's why they're bright colors. Did you know that? Like if you think of back in ancestors time, fruit wants to be eaten. Why? Because they want you to eat it, take in their seeds and poop it out. And then they grow another tree somewhere else. It's sort of kind of gross, but you know, animals will come and eat and then they eat and they take the seeds of the apple and then they get, then the seeds get planted somewhere else. That's why fruit wants to be eaten. But most, all plants, all plants don't want to get eaten. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everyone. I'm going to end now so that we can, uh, anyone else here can get to another class. If you've got another class back to back. Thank you for being here and uh, let me know how you fare with those recipes. I really want to hear about it. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You are it's very good welcome. Oh, good. Goodbye. I'm glad you loved it. Bye, everybody. You. What'd you say? If you have gout, you shouldn't have what? Eat what? Purines. There, if you if you look at it, pure foods with purines oh, okay. in them. So shellfish, things like that. But yeah, you'll have to look that one up. All right. Take